Next up in chemistry, we've got cooking and food additives. Again, this one's pretty straightforward, really. So, we need to be able to say and explain how foods change when they are cooked. And if a chemical is changed permanently, we call this a chemical change, and it's irreversible. The ones we need to know about are what happens to protein and starch. So, protein, when it's heated, proteins have specific shapes. So, this one is shaped a bit like a C. When I heat it, so I cook it, it loses its shape, which means it can no longer do its job anymore. And that's what cooking does to proteins. It changes their shape. Now, the scientific word for this is denatured. And that's what we do with proteins when we cook them. Uh, so here I've got a potato cell, an example of a potato cell, which is made up of starch, really. So when I cook this potato cell, the cell wall uh, begins to break and soften, which changes the texture. It makes it uh, softer. What then happens is that the starch grains inside uh, swell up and they also spread out so they leave the cell which changes the texture of it so it's now instead of being hard and firm like a raw potato it gets soft and squashy like a cooked potato uh, that's the chemistry of cooking basically so next we need to have a look at additives so by additives I mean things that we add to foods so there's a few that we need to know and they do different jobs Basically, you need to know the additive and the job. I've just given you some extra information on the side here. Things we can add are flavour enhancers, and they're just there to make food taste better. Um, the examples of this would be salt, vinegar, and monosodium glutamate, uh, MSG. It's the thing that you see in that uh, really chemical-looking sweet and sour Chinese sauce. That, that will be full of MSG. That's why it tastes good. Next we've got colour enhancers and their job is just to make food look more appealing. Um, often when we process foods they lose a bit of their colour so the colour enhancers are just there to make them look appealing and that's all they do. Next on the list are preservatives. Their job is to make food last longer. Natural examples of this are vinegar and sugar but we can add artificial preservatives as well. Basically, they just stop microbes from growing and from the fats from changing so that they become untasty, basically. Just there to make food last longer. And the last one are emulsifiers, which we need to know a bit more about. But emulsifiers, emulsifiers basically stop sources or liquids from separating into two different layers, often an oil layer and a water layer. So, you don't need to know these, but... E numbers are the things that we add, and the number of it tells you what it does. I don't know if you knew this or not. It's just an interesting piece of information, I think. So, 100 to 199 are colours, 200 to 299 preservatives, and so on and so forth. And all of these are things that you're allowed to add. So, E numbers mean a huge number of things. Uh, they're often written off as being things that just make children hyper, but they do more than that. So, I said we need to know a bit more about emulsifiers. Um, and to understand how emulsifiers work, we need to know what emulsions are. Uh, because emulsifiers make emulsions stay together, basically. Now, an emulsion is a mixture of two things that don't really dissolve in each other, but they stay together. So, oil and water, like in a salad dressing, like this one here, show you... Um, what an emulsion is but this one has separated so we've got the watery layer and the oily layer so they've separated apart and we've got some stuff in the middle now if you shook them up they'd all mix up and they'd be all together and whilst they're all together they're an emulsion uh, paint is also an emulsion and um, there are other ones as well that are often a mixture of fat and water so milk is an emulsion it's basically fat suspended in water sounds tasty right um, and then we've got cream and butter which are basically the same things they just have different ratios of, of fat to water but that's what they are they're two things that don't dissolve in each other but stay together we'll talk a bit more about them later because there's there are also a group of things called colloids which we'll talk about when we do paints so the emulsifier is the additive that stops them from separating 
So the way it works is we've got our water molecule and our oil molecule, and they don't like to mix. They hate each other, basically. So what we do is we stick in our emulsifier. Now emulsifiers have got two ends. One end is hydrophobic, which means it hates water, which also means it likes oil. And then it's got another end, which is hydrophilic, which means it loves water. So it'll join to the water. So what happens then is we put our emulsifier in, and then one end attaches to the water, and the other end attaches to the oil. It then kind of, in essence, coats them in a little bubble that stops them from being in, or seeing each other, as it were. It stops them from separating. It just mediates the two and makes them get along, basically. So that's how they work. So the key words you need to get from there are hydrophobic and hydrophilic. And the last thing we need to talk about is baking powder. So you may know baking powder is something you can put into um, baked goods to make them rise. Um, sometimes it's used instead of yeast. So baking powder is given the chemical name sodium hydrogen carbonate. And when we heat it up, it becomes sodium carbonate plus water plus carbon dioxide. And there's the simple equation for it. Now, basically, it's the carbon dioxide that's given off by the baking powder that causes bubbles of gas to appear. And that's what makes your cakes rise. Without it, Bake Off would be relying purely on yeast. So that's pretty much it for our cooking unit. It's, again, nice, short and sweet. Remember, if you've got any questions, just ask uh, or write them down and then ask when you see me. Until next time.